Okay, um, tower, t tower types. We just rattled through the, the towers and the foundations, and then we take a tea break, okay? The, the freestanding tower is probably the one that most people really ought to run with, unless you're going to a very extreme height, okay? It is more expensive, and it requires a larger concrete base than a guy wire system, but it doesn't have any guy wires. It means that it's safe with animals. The amount of land that it takes up is fairly minimal, and um, the big thing is it doesn't need any maintenance, right? Because with guy wire systems, you need to take them down every year. You need to inspect the guy wires <coughs> and, and grease them. And people with the best will in the world will put in a system saying they're going to do that. You meet them three years later. Have you taken your tower down yet? Meaning to do that. So they're, they're quite easy to take up and down. And you can usually do it fairly easily on your own. And they, they don't require any maintenance. And this is um, our, our probing being hoisted using a gin pole here and being pulled back to the anchor point. Okay. Lattice towers are quite popular in the States, especially where they're going to greater heights. The amount of steel work required is, is it's easier to engineer it, if you like. Um, they're still expensive, and they're, they're very much more difficult to put up and down. Usually they're lifted up and down using a crane or using some sort of lifting gear. You certainly wouldn't take them up and down with a winch and a gin pole. It does spread the load over a wide ground area and it's safe with animals. As against that, this certainly in this format here would be considered unsafe for children. You'd want to put some very clever guarding around there to make sure that children didn't start um, using it as a climbing frame. If you're going extreme heights, it does make sense. Look, the load is at the top of the tower and you're trying to hold it at the base and the torque that's applying to the base gets too high beyond a certain point and uh, so if you're going to the 30 meters, 40 meters, it may well be that you would decide then to put guy wires onto the system, okay? And so you use a tower where the guy wires are coming down, spreading the load and taking the load from the top of the turbine and bringing it down to a certain point. It does create a very large no-go area for cattle, horses, large animals. If they start scratching themselves against it, you'll see the whole everything bending. And um, <clears throat> it does surprise, it is, I had, did have one of them up here in our own place, a guy wire system, and I walked into it one night. So I don't walk around without flashlights anymore when there are those things around. And they do require greasing and maintenance, which is the, the big downside to them. Uh, the guys are usually made out of galvanized steel rather than stainless steel. You see stainless steel used on yachts, but it has to be changed every 10 years. Stainless steel work hardens over time and then suddenly snaps with no visible evidence. Galvanized ones, you can see the rust coming on them and you know you have to change them when you start seeing rust appearing. Okay, in terms of digging foundations, you need to keep the sides absolutely vertical. It's okay if they're slightly bell-shaped, but if you have foundations that are shaped like this, coming in towards the bottom, the ability for the system to fall over, or rock and fall over, are, <coughs> are left there, okay? Um, if you're using guy wires, it's, it, as I say, it's better to have four rather than three. Um, you may need a further anchor point at some distance from the turbine if you're using a gin pole, although we personally prefer to use a hydraulic ram to take the turbine up and down. Not using a hydraulic ram means that you have to waste a cubic meter of concrete on an anchor point for winching. Okay? And generally speaking, you need a gin pole to lift the turbine up and down because as it gets to horizontal, you don't have a purchase on it. Okay, so this is the, the foundation for our um, 11 meter tower. You can see that the height of it is 1.5 meters, 1.2 meters across the square. And you've got a plate that goes in on top and at the bottom. The top plate is removed once the foundation has gone off. So. This, this bit then is where you put the, um, the, the base of the tower. So you've got a plate at the bottom and you've got um, the, uh, the, the bolts which are 1.1 metres long, the studs. Okay, so you, you've got a plate at the bottom that stays there and you've got one at the top that comes out when the concrete has gone off. So you assemble the plate. If you're using steel work, you have to slide it down the plate and then you hold it in at the top and you drop it in as you pour in the concrete. As an alternative to using steel, if you use microfibers in the, in the cement mix, you then don't need to use steel work. Okay, 
So we dig the hole 1.2 by 1.2 by 1.5 deep. We put shuttering around, around the hole to make a slight plinth to, to lift it off the ground. And we support it on four by twos and then level it all off on the four bolts. Okay. We then run through the two inch pipe to carry the cable back into the trench that's going to take the cables back to the house. We put rubber glove fingers onto the four bolts just to stop the concrete getting onto them and to make it easier to clean them off. And then <coughs> we pour the, pour the concrete. We make sure we use a vibratory poker to make sure that we filled all the corners of the hole because it really relies on the roughness of the, of the sides of the hole and the concrete going right up against that tight to hold the torque of the, 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 the moment of the tower, the bending forces on the tower. Okay. So then we pour the concrete, remove the shuttering the next day, and clean off the, um, the threaded bar. So we're left, we take off the top plate at that point, and we're left with the threaded bar sticking out of the ground, and the pipe coming through to carry the cables. And then we put the, um, the base of the tower onto, the, uh, onto the, the nuts here. We measured which of the four nuts was the highest, and then we took a level off those. We leveled all the other nuts against that. We uh, put the base down on top of that, and then made sure that it was level. And if it wasn't level, we could adjust it with the four nuts at the bottom, get it absolutely level, and put the nuts on top. And that's the tower mounted. We can run the cables down through the, the, the um, cable trench, it, it, from the cable trench through that two inch pipe and up into the base of the tower. We also ran a, an earth cable from the base of the tower through the cable, tr through, the, through the, the pipe and took it up to an earthing rod that's going to go in here. Okay. And so then we can mount the tower on the base after two weeks. We leave that for two weeks to go off. Mount the tower on the base, rest it on the scaffold at the top end, make sure that that's able to take the weight and we're able to mount the turbine and put in a hydraulic ram here to lift the turbine up and down and it's ready to, to go with that. Okay, so you need to check with the manufacturer as to what's the appropriate type and strength of, of concrete. In our case, the whole system is engineered and designed around using 40 Newton concrete with microfibers or with steel support. If you're using steel reinforcement, you should make sure that it's not protruding to the side of the trench because then you can get rust forming. Um, the, if you have anything other than the, the sort of the ground conditions, the ground conditions need to be clay within a reasonable depth. You know, if you find that you're involved or you have to go way deep to get clay, then you must redesign the foundation accordingly and get it engineered. So you need to contact the turbine supplier and say, look, I've got bog here. If you've got bog, they may make a, a, a foundation that is self-supporting, that depends purely on its weight to hold the turbine up. <coughs> you need to prevent water pooling around the tower base. And from that point of view, we prefer to leave a gap under the tower base, but you could fill that with a, with a grout. And the, um, you need to thoroughly compact it, as I say. And generally speaking, you should follow the specifications for the turbine. The turbine should have an engineered solution for your ground conditions and you need to follow those absolutely to the letter. In terms of, of raising it and lowering it, like I say, generally speaking, we would use a hydraulic ram as our first option and our preferred option, but you can also uh, use a gin pole, <coughs> and that gin pole should be taken off to an anchor point on the ground using the turfer winch. But you can see there that <coughs> even at that, the, 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 the pulling moment on this is three or four times the weight of the turbine in the tower. So in the case of our proven machine, I think it's a two ton winch that they recommend. You, you must follow the, uh, the guidelines for that. Okay, so this is the, the turfo winch being used to haul up the, the, um, the tower here. Okay, we'll take a break at that, I think.